Welcome Queer Conversation. I'm here in the studio with Nusi, a Melbourne singer and songwriter. Welcome, Nusi. Thank you for having me. You launched a new single last month on the 16th of November that came out um, called Down to Earth. So, Nusi, let's let's have a listen to a sample of the track. I did listen to it the other day and it's actually really Thanks. fantastic. It's very summary, upbeat and not knowing much of your music and the history where you where you come from. Maybe you can just tell me a little bit what's your background on music. Oh, uh, well, um, how long have you got? Um, so I started playing music when I was, my parents put me in um, piano lessons when I was four. So it was kind of something that like I'd always done Um and I don't know, I, th I think I kind of went to it quite naturally. My parents always said when I was younger that I didn't ever really want to practice what I was actually given by my teacher. I just wanted to kind of like write my own songs and, you know, and things like that. Um, so they actually used to bribe me with like coloured stickers where if I'd practised 20 minutes of what I was set from my teacher, then I was allowed to kind of, you know, do something. I was always a piano player and I didn't come to singing till quite later. Um, I think I was probably about 16. I'd always sung in choirs and things, but I never really thought that I was like a solo vocalist. I was just kind of, it was something that I did, but I don't know. I probably wasn't really confident enough. And I think because I'd always sat in the background and played in bands, I just wasn't really used to being a front person. And then it was actually a music teacher at school who she heard me sing in a choir and rang my mum and said, she's going to be a singer now. That's I'm putting her in singing lessons. This is how much it costs. Um, and then I ended up being a vocal major at uni. So it was weird turn of events but then I I think it was I'd always kind of thought that I I always loved writing my own music but I'd always thought that I would write for other people and produce for other people and then that kind of opened up another door to me where I kind of thought well I can sing my own songs now so the Nusi project started probably I think was 2014 I released my first EP um, and I went into the studio with two friends of mine who were like, you know, I met them both through uni. Um, they're called M Squared Productions. They're based in Melbourne um, and it was re a, a really nice first experience for me to go into the studio with people who I knew for years and trusted and it was not a scary experience where you know, I felt really open to be able to kind of like write and talk about themes and things, you know, they basically knew my whole life story anyway, because we'd been friends for years. So they weren't hearing anything new. Um, and we co-wrote the EP, released that. And at that point, the shows I was playing, I was playing with a five-piece band. Um, so I kind of took some time away from DJing at that point. I'd been DJing since I was about 16. And then, yeah, I took a little bit of time away from DJing because, like, to focus on my band work, um, especially while I was in uni, it was, like, a big focus on, like, live performance and the whole band thing. Um, and then, yeah, so my my band at the point where I released my EP, we were a five piece. So I toured a little bit with the five piece. And then I realized that is incredibly expensive in Australia because everything is really far away. <laughs> it's not like in the States or like in Europe where you can 
get in a car or like in a van and drive everywhere. It's like, you know, five airfares plus my own plus, you know, at that point my parents were still wanting to come everywhere because they wanted to see me play all the time. Um, you know, now they they come to the Melbourne shows, but they're like, oh, yeah, she's in Sydney this week. We don't need to go anymore. Um, but, yeah, it's it was incredibly expensive. Um, and as an independent artist, it's you, like you're funding that all on your own. Um, so the amount of second and third and fourth jobs that I was having to have to maintain being able to do that, I thought, okay, there has to be an easier way to do this. Um, so we pulled the band back and it became a three-piece, so two musos and me, um, and that was a lot more sustainable. And then it became a two-piece because we went overseas um, to Canada and kind of same thing, it's like, again, incredibly expensive to fly like three people across the world. Um, so I pulled it back to a two-piece and then we were sitting in our Airbnb in Canada and my bandmate, Bestie, he said to me, why, like, why are you not playing in the band anymore? He said, I'm going to do myself out of a job here, but you can play. Why are you not playing? And it was kind of this weird thing where I completely stepped away from playing and I was like the front person and I was singing and it was great. But then I thought, well, like I started kind of DJing a lot more and I was DJing a lot of kind of house and disco sets. And I thought, well, like I could do this as a one, like as a solo act. Um, so it kind of then ended up meshing into now my live show is me DJing with, I've got a sample pad that I play, a little keyboard that I also play and on vocals and now I travel solo. As I kind of started DJing more, I started thinking, well, I'd love to be able to play my own songs in my DJ sets. And so it was kind of this natural progression where I went more into writing dance music. I'd always kind of written probably more like straight down the line pop songs. And it just, yeah, it just kind of naturally went into this pop dance world because that was the music I was surrounding myself with a lot of the time. So that was a lot of my influences. But also, yeah, I wanted to be able to play my own songs when I was DJing as well. So then, so if I'm doing a DJ set, I will basically just play the track in part of my set. Um, but if, when I do a live show, my whole set is mixed as if it was a DJ set. So I take very few breaks. It's like every single song is mixed into the next song. Um, and I've been very lucky where I have a lot of good friends who work in the production space where they kind of helped me with, you know, making extended versions of all the tracks so that I can mix them into each other so that there are tiny breaks where I can go, okay, I need a, need a little bit of water because I'm going to sing another song or, or talk to the audience or things like that. Um, but there's, it's a very high energy live set there's very little downtime um but it is so much fun where can people see you perform yeah so i have a live show in melbourne coming up um on 10th of december um and it's at the night cat in fitzroy um it's i'm opening for an amazing artist royal drew um she's amazing so um the whole show will be great um but yeah I'm opening and it's actually just going to be really fun I haven't because of COVID I haven't really played that many live shows in the last couple of years I like the last really big shows that I did were in 2019 I went over to Sweden um and played a festival there live at heart and that was like amazing I yeah if I could go live there I would um, but 
yeah, just then because of COVID in between, it's kind of been a little bit disjointed. I've played a couple of shows in between, um, like in between lockdowns and things, but I'm really, really looking forward to this one because I think everyone is actually happy to kind of go out and be around people. And I mean, it took quite a long time for live music, I think, to come back, especially in Melbourne, because we had so many lockdowns and then people were scared to go out and things like that, but it's back now. I mean, being in lockdown for so long, it's like so many people said to me, oh, you've got so much time to sit and write music, but it's also like you're not going out and having like experiences and, you know, it being stuck in a house doesn't really breed creativity at all. So that was pretty hard. Um, with Down to Earth, I'd actually recorded it pre-COVID. Um, so I'd worked on it, written the song, done all the vocals, but then we weren't able to finish it because we weren't allowed to go into the studio. Um, so in between one of the lockdowns, I was able to go into the studio with Jack who produced it and we um, we mixed the track and that was awesome. Um, but, yeah, there was a lot of downtime in the last two years where I spent a lot of time watching TV and twiddling my thumbs. Um, it was really hard to be creative in that time. It was just it was kind of really depressing. It was not nice and I was probably not a nice person to be around because I wasn't able to, like, music is my outlet, playing shows is my outlet. Your fans? Yeah. How did they take the Down to Earth? single that came out is it was did you have a good respond yeah it's been really really nice I I've had so many people say such like such nice things and you know people saying like oh we can't wait to come and see this live and it's yeah it's it's really overwhelming actually because especially not having put anything out for the last two years I don't know I think for a long time I was kind of doing, you know, single after single after single after single and you kind of get really used to putting music out and putting yourself on the line like that. But I think because I hadn't put anything out for so long, it was I'd kind of gone back to square one and I was really nervous and, you know, a couple of my friends kind of said to me like, oh, you've put music out before, why is this different? And I said, well, I haven't put anything out for two years. It's like... It's almost like putting out a first single again. It's it's strange, but it's been really, really nice. And nice to see that people, even though it has been two years, people have kind of stayed on board and people are still excited about new music that I'm putting out. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's really nice to know that, you know, something that I'm really proud of is being received. And have you performed or will you perform at any LGBTQI plus festivals or events? Yeah, I did um, Gay Times in Victoria a couple of years ago. Um, I'm trying to think what year that was. It might have been the first or second one. I can't remember, um, but it was up like somewhere where it snows. It wasn't snowing when we did the festival, but that was, yeah, that was really fun. I got into that because... I was DJing for years. Um, a friend of mine and her friend started um, a lesbian night at Francesca's Bar in High Street in Northcote in Melbourne. And so I kind of started DJing there. She'd asked me to play and I started playing there and then I kind of just, that's how it, then I got to play gay times because people had seen me play there and said, you know, oh, your sets are really fun. Can, you know. I was just um, hoping that you might say, yeah, I'm coming up for World Pride. Right. That would be a dream. That would be a dream. Yeah. I played at, um, I've played at the Pride March in Melbourne. Um, another friend of mine, she runs a, um, a DJ business called Caravan Sounds. And I actually met her because she was another DJ playing at Francesca's. Um, back in the day and so and we kind of you know became friends because she used to play the earlier sets and I used to take over after her and she runs um yeah so she runs this business called Caravan Sounds and basically they've fitted out and like a little caravan with decks and they'll come to you know they do like weddings any sort of events but they do like a lot of um like public activations as well 
Um, and I've done quite a few sets in the caravan with her, which has been really fun. But yeah, they got um, they got the contract to do the Pride March. Was it this this year or last? It might have been last year when it was pushed um, because of COVID, and I think it ended up happening in like May or something like that. And I was stationed at the start of the march. It was so much fun. It was just like anthem after anthem after anthem. Right. I was like, well, I was in heaven. Um, it was amazing. Where can people download Down to Earth and how can people find you on socials? So um, on all my socials, um, I'm at Nussi Music. And so it makes it very easy because it's the same across the board. Um, and you can stream Down to Earth on all the normal streaming platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, all of those. Well, thank you so much, Nussi, for joining us on Queer Conversation today. I encourage our listeners to check out uh, Nussi's music. I did, and I, I really love that uh, Down to Earth is a great track. So well done. And if you like to hear more Queer Conversation, make sure to follow us on Lotl Media. And you can also head to our website, lotl.com, where you will find 30 years of history of LOTL magazine. My name is Silke Bader and thank you for your company.